and today on the God's Glory Radio Show Television. I'm telling y'all, we're going to be talking about a touchy subject today. And what better person to talk about it than the very anointed coming all the way from Concord, North Carolina. We have Cassandra O'Neill with us. How you doing, woman of God? I'm doing fine. Doing well. Thank you so much. I'm telling y'all, I don't heard so many stories about this woman of God. She's singing, bilingual. Oh, my God. It's such a blessing to have her in the building. And today on the God's Glory Radio Show Television, we're going to be talking about what is our topic today? We're actually going to talk about child abuse prevention, mm, mm, which mm. is April is the, the month for that. Now, who would ever think that uh, we would talk about such a, an important topic? I'm so glad this woman of God came all the way down here to Charlotte to uh, talk to us about this. Now, a lot of us don't even know what it is uh, when we're talking about child abuse. Uh, we're talking about um, things that happen perhaps in the home, it can happen in the school, it can happen in your family, it can happen among friends, in our community. And I don't want to say it can happen in the church, but it can happen pretty much anywhere. Um, and what that could be is as simple as someone doing harm to a, a child, a human being. Um, it's as simple as somebody taking their fist, a grown adult, Balling their fist up and punching a little small child in the face. A uh, woman of God, if you could be so kind to just uh, continue to talk about this touchy subject today at this time. The um, abuse of children can take the form of physical abuse, but it also can be verbal mm. abuse, emotional abuse. To not give the child the love that they need, not that and deserve. I was going to say not just that they deserve, but the love that they need. It's a need everybody including adults, need to be loved. So the abuse that we're talking about preventing is physical abuse of a child, uh, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, telling a child that they're no good, that nothing's good is, is gonna ever happen for them or they are never gonna amount to anything. Even when you say things like, you just like your daddy, that's abusive, that's, that's harmful. So it's those type of things that we want to help prevent. Um, not only during the month of April, but all year long, because it's not just happening in April. It's happening in January, February, March, April, uh, throughout the year. And so hence the color blue <laughs> is the actual color. That's the color that represents um, child, child abuse uh, prevent, prevention um, awareness. And for those of you that are tuning in uh, to the God's Great Radio Show television, if you look at her hair, she's very dedicated um, to this topic. Um, the reason why she has her hair dyed today blue is in regards to this topic uh, because it's a very much needed topic. Um, what you have to understand is verbal abuse is when you look at a child, you look at an individual and you say, you are so stupid. I mean, I'm telling you, you're going to be just like your father. Or you come up with something like, uh, you know, your mama was in jail, your daddy's going to jail, your great-grandfather was in jail, your brother's in jail, and guess what? You're going to be in jail just like the rest of them because your whole family ain't nothing but a bunch of jailbirds, and that's just, you're just nothing. You're just nobody. It's just talking down on a person. And what we got to understand is you are planting a seed in somebody's life when you tell them that they are nobody. You are planting a seed when you tell them your mama and your family, your whole family was in jail. You're going to be in jail like the rest of them. We need to pray for these people. We need to minister to these people. We don't need to be tearing people down because, you know, folks are human beings. Would you like somebody calling you stupid? Would you like somebody calling you your name? Hey, you are so fat. I'm going to call you fat so. Or, oh my God, you know, you are so ugly. I mean, who want to hear that? Who wants to live like that? You know, it's such abusive language. And when we think about that, um, we don't know what impact mentally we're having on another person when we speak down on them. But woman of God, when people talk down on another person and they say negative words, negative things, I mean, what, what's your take on it? How do you think people feel? That's just terrible. Well, I know firsthand what it feels like to have somebody say to you, you're not going to amount to anything. I know what it feels like to say your life, you, you haven't done anything with your life since you left school. I know what that feels like, and I can, can say that it does not feel good 
that most of the time when when something is said to us that's negative that person if they don't feel it with something else positive when they go home they're hearing that in their head over and over and over and over again. When they're dreaming, they're dreaming about what was said over and over and over again. So words do have power. And we seem to think um, we, we, we're OK with it when it's positive. We'll speak those things that are positive. But we forget that those same that same power is given to the negative words that we speak. So I want to encourage not just the person who is um, being abused, you know, the children sometimes can't even speak up for themselves, but I want to say to those children um, who by chance may see this broadcast, tell somebody. Um, if somebody's being mean to you, if somebody is hurting you, somebody's harming you, because the person that you go to tell could actually get you the help that you're going to need. And I know sometimes that the uh, adults may say, if you tell anybody, I'm going to hurt you, or if you tell anybody, I'm going to do something to your mom or your dad. Don't let that stop you. The policemen are your friends. Teachers are your friends. Counselors are your friends. So find somebody that you can tell so that you can get the help that you need. Choose somebody who may be abusing a child or anybody for that matter. And you just happen to see this broadcast. First, I want, I want to say to you that I'm almost positive that's not the kind of life you want to live. That you don't want to be known as a person that abuses children or a person that abuses people. That deep down inside, you don't want to be that way. Well, we're going to offer you the same help. There are people that are ready to help people, the abusers, ready to help you talk through some things. Maybe you were abused as a child, and that's why you're doing it. We don't want to condemn you, but we don't want you to continue doing what you're doing. So if you've got the guts, and I'm going to call you out, you got the guts to lay your hands on a child or lay your hands on another person, come on, be a big person now. Be a bigger person and cry out for the help that you need. Because otherwise, you're going to keep going on the way that you're going. You'll end up in jail. And I'm not even against that. I think if you've done the crime, you should do the time. But I'm praying that while you're incarcerated, that you'll get the help even there. We're not wanting to, get to condemn you, but we definitely don't want to condone what, what's being done. What I want to say that this is real, y'all. This is real. Um, this is a real topic we're discussing, and it happens in a lot of places and places we least expect that are actually taking place. Um, I could tell you, you need to talk to your children. Parents need to talk to your children, and you need to um, have a conversation with them and allow them to understand that they're not going to get in trouble. But we need to have a conversation. A lot of times, we're dropping these children off at the babysitter. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Um, a long time ago, I remember my brother um, had a situation that the babysitter ate his lunch. Y'all laughing, but it happened. He ate his lunch and he was hungry all day. He told his mom, uh, mom reported. And then there was a situation when I was at the babysitter's house um, that the lady used to scream at me, used to yell at me, uh, picked up a stick off of the hit me, um, had me terrified. And so when I went to the babysitter, I would sit there all day, scared, terrified, didn't even um, know what to do because this here I am, this young person, and I'm in there with this adult, had this big German shepherd, and my mom was gone. And I, I thought if I told my mom on it, I was gonna get a beating. Um, and truth of the matter is when I told my mom, I don't wanna go in there. She said, why? I said, I don't wanna go. And I start telling her, I don't, please, I don't wanna go to the babysitter today. And my mom was like, well, why you want to go to the babysitter? And I said, um, she going to hit me with a stick. Um, she's mean. She screams and she yells at me. I had a conversation. I thought I was going to get a whooping. But instead, my mom moved me to another sitter. Um, sometimes uh, we got to talk to our children because if we don't talk to the child, the child's not going to come forward. And we have to help the child understand that if they come forward, they won't be punished. Uh, they won't get a spanking. They won't get a beating. Uh, they won't have their video games taken from them. Let them know that you want to know uh, what's going on. Um, help. Uh, be concerned. Be concerned as a parent. Um, uh, this is a time you got to be a, a friend uh, when you talk to your child. Um, because guess what? Uh, children don't know. Um, I, I thought I was going to get beaten, y'all. I ain't going to lie. I thought I was going to get a whooping. I thought my mom was going to beat me. And I thought, you know, she, uh, you know. I thought that my mom was gonna whip me and everything. Like I keep repeating it, but it was it was a hard situation. But when I told my parent, 
My mom had words with her. They got to arguing and that kind of thing. And the next thing you know, I was somewhere else. So I, I hope um, this take y'all take heed to that and even go to the babysitter. A whole other situation. Um, ask them what's going on at the sitter. Um, the other kids might be biting them. At the, biting your kid. Yo, somebody might jump your kid. He ain't gonna, they're not going to tell you unless they feel comfortable. Um, again, we're talking about this sensitive topic uh, woman of God We have Cassandra O'Neill here with us Who actually mentioned this topic to us It's this actually her topic y'all um, I can't usually come up with topic But this topic right here was from this woman of God I, I bless this woman of God For coming uh, with this particular topic Because I'm telling y'all This was not on the agenda I thank God for using her um, To help educate us and get us help today <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just Go ahead and the last thing that I do want to say, um, I know it seems strange to actually reach out to an abuser, but I, I just feel that's important. Part of the prevention is to meet, to, to help meet needs that the abuser may have. They have need of therapy. They have need of uh, a place where they can turn to and, and uh, get the help that they need. Again, I'm not condoning. I'm not saying if you've done it that you shouldn't pay. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying if you're really remorseful and you're regretful for it and you want the help, that the help is there. Um, I'm glad that you brought up about being concerned about the children and asking questions. Sometimes it's, it's that, that first question that will get them talking. Like I'm always, I always ask my children, I ask my granddaughter now when she comes home, how was school today? Did anybody do anything? And I'll name whatever. Did anybody say this? No, if I was um, sexually molested hmm. when I was five years old, but because my birthday is in November, um, I didn't get to go to kindergarten at the normal time as the other students. So for a full year, I was every day other than when um, my mom was on vacation or um, special holidays. But every day that would happen to me. It was the babysitter's 14 year old son. Um, not knowing, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what he was doing. I mean, I remember what he was doing to me, but I didn't know what was going on at the time. Um, but I started showing signs of something being wrong, but my mom, she didn't know those signs, first of all. Um, so she didn't ask questions. And it affected me, it really did. It affected my high, uh, elementary school. I remember having a rage in me and not understanding why I could get so mad in a split second. Um, it, it just, it really uh, affected me, but I thank God for salvation. Let me put it that way. When I gave my life to Christ at the age of 10, it's like he came in and, and just, he held me together um, until I could remember everything that had happened and at a safe time in my life because I, um, when I remembered it it came a few days after rededicating my life to the Lord which happened to be one day after con contemplating suicide I was standing on the you you lived here in Charlotte um, the corner of Dr. Carver and West Boulevard wow. standing on that corner um, just having a conversation with the enemy and remember we talked about negative words the reason I was on that corner is because I've heard in my mind over and over again the negative things that people have said about me. I looked at my life, how I was living, um, being very promiscuous, not knowing why, not even knowing that now looking back that that was a sexual addiction that was birthing me because of the child molestation. So I'm hearing all the people talk about me, the names that they're calling me. Um, I didn't like how I was living. And so I'm there on that corner and all those thoughts are in my head. Everything that people have said, how I feel about myself, I didn't love me. And the enemy is right there saying, okay, the next car that comes, the next car that comes by, just step off the curb, step right in front of it. And I'm, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting on the car. And then the Holy Spirit just, and it's his sweet loving way says, try me, try me one more time. Because I had been going to church, but it's like it wasn't working. I was going to church, but I didn't have that real relationship with Christ. So when he said, try me one more time, my mind went to just go back to church. So that's what I did. I got up and I went back to church. And two days after giving my life, rededicating my life back to the Lord, is when all of those memories of what happened to me at the, as that five-year-old came flooding back. And all I could do was fall on my knees and just began to thank God and praise him. Because had I remembered what happened to me 
two days earlier, I would have stepped out in front of that, that next car that came. But God has a way. And so I'm here today because of God's grace to share about child abuse prevention. God saved me for a reason. Called me for a reason. This is just one of many of those reasons. But as long as I have breath in my body, I'm going to do what I can do to help. Just to make sure that we're getting these children the help that they need. You know, I, I'm so touched um, and honored to, to have you here um, with your story. And I'm very moved emotionally um, about, you know, you thinking about stepping off the curve. And I'm so glad that she didn't. This woman of God, when she opened her mouth up to, to, to sing, it's amazing what comes out of her mouth. She's bilingual. And when she ministers in songs, it, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever heard in my life. And what the enemy wanted to do was destroy that and take that away. There were people speaking negative things about her, speaking down on her. And it almost put her to a point that she wanted to take her life. And I'm so glad that God stepped in there um, because had she not um, listened to God's voice, we would have missed the blessing that she's going to give us today with ministering and song. Um, she would not have been here. Like I said, it wasn't even the topic that I had. She brought this topic to me. I would not even been able to probably have this topic in the fashion that we had it had she not came forth. So God is using this woman of God mightily with her songs, with ministering in songs, with her witness, with her testimony, and most importantly, with her victory. Uh, because this woman of God right here, this is a symbol of victory right here. Um, there are a lot of folk out here that made the wrong choice. Um, they, I won't say they were defeated because there's never going to be, uh, we don't have defeated people out here. But they put themselves in a position that they shouldn't have been in. Uh, and I'm just so glad uh, that God touched this woman and allowed this woman of God uh, to live and not die. And there's so many people out there that's listening to this broadcast right there. And I truly believe that her testimony is going to change a lot of lives. There are a lot of people out here that felt just like she did, that want to throw in a towel, that want to commit suicide, that think that they're nobody. Woman of God, what would you like to say to them at this time? Well, I want to first of all tell you that you're not a mistake. Your birth, you might have been a surprise to your mom and daddy, but you were not a mistake. God knew exactly what he was doing. He even said, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So first and foremost, know that you're not a mistake. Secondly, know that about uh, out of everybody in this entire world, there's one true person that you can count on to love you despite what you what you're facing even right now, what you've done. And that's God. He loves you. That's the best news I'm going to ever, ever be able to give you. He loved you so much that he was not even willing to have to, to, to live life. He didn't want to be without you. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. So if you're in that predicament or that situation where you're feeling like you just can't go on, you want to give up. First of all, know that you're loved. You're not a mistake. But also know that there's 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 tomorrow. <laughs> All you got to do today is just decide that you're going to live. You're going to live because God has better for you. If you want to live and you choose to do that, you can get over and get past anything. So if you allow me, can I pray yeah, for please, them? Please, I want to pray please. for you. I please. want you to, to just, um, what we're going to pray for is first and foremost that God's will be done in your life. Because I don't know everything that you're facing. But I do know that God's will is powerful enough to be done when you surrender to it. So all I want you to do is just surrender to his will. So please allow me to pray for you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you first and foremost for being God. Thank you for not only being a God that hears our prayers, but you answer our prayers. God, there are many people who are just like I was that have been abused, um, 
that find themselves at a point where they just don't want to live anymore. They're at a point where they just feel that they would be better off, that people's lives would be better if they were not here. But I hear you saying, Holy Spirit, try me one more time. Try me. And so I pray, God, for these individuals that if they don't have a relationship with your son, Jesus, that today would be a great day for them to make that choice to accept your son as their savior. Just by simply admitting that they, they need to be saved, that they're a sinner, that they've done bad things, that they've said bad things, that they've gone in uh, wrong places. But they need to be saved. If they can admit that today and just uh, and say that they believe that you are Jesus, the son of God and die for their sins and then ask you to come into their life, show them how to. To be the follower of Christ that you call them to be. When they do that, God, we we can rejoice in the fact that they are now born again and saved. We also are praying, Lord God, that you give them victory. Give them victory over the circumstance. Yes, they've been hurt. Yes, they've been abused. But they can also say yes to the God who can relieve all kinds of pain, who can take away the pain, who can heal the brokenhearted, who can mend the broken hearts. We pray, Lord God, for them right now. And I pray that you'll give them the strength to find Find a Bible teaching church where they can begin to not just attend and hear what you have to say through your preacher, but also, God, a place where they can begin to serve. That just like you've given me victory over this, you'll give them victory so that they can share their story without shame or condemnation so that other people's lives can be influenced inspired but most of all God that they'll be able to to give that testimony that it was nobody but God one day I just happened to be flipping through the channels and I came across this broadcast and I heard this lady talking about her story and sharing her story and 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 it it sounded so much like mine that I couldn't turn away from the television and now that I have the opportunity to allow God to mend my heart to make me whole again so that I can share my story that others lives can be changed just like mine was so I pray God over those individuals right now and I pray again that you'll place them in um, churches where they can be ministered to so they can be taught your word and also how to pray and uh, and believe God for those things that just seem impossible we give you praise God for this victory in Jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. now what I want to say to the abuser out here if you are calling somebody stupid and you are telling somebody they're nothing and if you are telling the, a person they're going to be just like their daddy or girl you're going to end up pregnant before you five or you ten or whatever age group you told them or whatever negative thing you said if you are the abuser I want you to think about this broadcast and what was said today and the woman of God's testimony and the things I said. And I want you to think about it real good. Um, it's not a coincidence you're even watching this broadcast. And it's okay to just say I'm sorry. Say I'm sorry to God. I ain't even ask you to apologize to man. I'm asking you to repent and apologize to God. And then I'm asking you to stop what you're doing. Stop calling people stupid. Stop calling people negative words. Stop telling people that they're going to end up in jail or they're going to end up pregnant or they are nobody because you are hurting somebody's feelings. You don't know what impact you are having on that person. You, God may have made you an influential person and you are made to build people up. But when you speak negative things, you are tearing somebody down. You may speak somebody into a place that they just want to just run away from home and never come back. You may be speaking down uh, to a person that they want to just end their life. And if you're punching somebody, abusing somebody, kicking somebody, or harming somebody, not only do I want you to stop, but I want you to find help somewhere out there. Somewhere out there there's somebody out there that you can talk to privately that you can share this with and allow them to minister to you and allow uh, them uh, to help you uh, in this situation. And, and I'm not going to say anything else, but I want to thank this woman of God uh, for coming all the way from Concord, North Carolina. Uh, we have, oh my God, we have Cassandra, Minister Cassandra, 
O'Neill, uh, woman of God. I want to thank you so much. Real quickly before we go, if you could please tell them how to get in touch with you at this time, please. Okay, well, my website is Cassandra O'Neill Ministries.com. That's C A S S A N D R A O N E A L Ministries.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, Cassandra O'Neill. Uh, Instagram is Cassandra O'Neill Music. Um, and Twitter is Cassandra O'Neill. Oh, that's so honored. I'm so honored and privileged to have this great woman of God come here all the way from Concord, North Carolina. Cassandra O'Neill, I thank you so much for being a guest on God's Glory Radio Broadcast. I'm telling y'all, she can sing. Y'all check it out. It's Victor and Denise Marshall right here on the God's Glory Radio Show Television. Jesus came on this earth to save those that are lost. And our mission today is to save souls. Romans 10 and 9 says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and rose again, then you shall be saved. And at this time, we just want to go into the sinner's prayer for anyone that is listening who want a better relationship with God, want to know who Jesus is. As we say the sinner's prayer, please repeat these words along with us. Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please come into my heart today so that I can live in relationship with you. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus, you were born in the flesh, was crucified on the cross, died and rose again, and is alive forevermore. Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me, teaching me how to live my life daily in relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of salvation today. I declare and confess that I am saved.